I noticed, Robert, you brought a, a gift for me today. Is that right? Is this, this like like that. I think that's wishful thinking. Is it wishful yeah, thinking? Like a, what, what is this? I don't think I've read anything that's quite as big as this. Yes. And, and, and it's quite pretty. Quite pretty as well. White and gold. Very... Uh, it's yes, very powerful. Um, what is what is this? Explain well, this is this is this only is. volume one. There's, there's volume actually one. another volume. There's two volumes of what's called the Civil Procedure Rules. Okay. And you'll notice it's white, and it's called the White. <laughs> and what this sets out, it it all the name. rules by which uh, the courts must operate. There's not law in it, although it refers to cases. It's the rules. Um, about bringing a case to court, what has to happen in court, um, indeed what we've been talking about, about judgment in default and setting aside mm. judgment in default. It's all the rules about litigation, civil mm. litigation, mm. and it's published every year um, and gets bigger and bigger and, in, in my view, um, less clear. Um, but that, that, that's another story. So, for example, um, service of the claim form um, and service of the claim form, as you know, must go to the last known address. This mm. is CPR 6. Mm. So if you're in a hearing for setting aside a judgment in default, my skeleton argument will refer probably to CPR 6 because this says that if it was sent to the last known address, that's good service. Okay. It doesn't matter whether the defendant has read it or received it. Mm. Um, and judgment in default is CPR 12. Um, setting aside a judgment in default is CPR 13. So these are all the rules for going to court. Lots and of rules. any civil litigation barrister or a solicitor or a legal exec will refer to these the whole time, especially a barrister in court. Mm. Um, and you just say you just say to the judge, look, I refer you to CPR twenty four, twenty five, um, and 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 then you take it from there. But th this is the bible of civil litigation. Mm. 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 And this is, as a, a barrister, correct me if I'm wrong here. This is where you try to make sure the judges are on track. They're not, they're not going off track. Yes, and. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm rather of the old school, so if a judge is giving his judgment, one doesn't interrupt. Mm. You tend to see new barristers sort of mm. trying to interrupt the judge, sometimes to good effect, so I don't know whether I'll continue doing this. And this is why I was so annoyed about the uh, judge's judgment in the, in the case we've just been talking about. Um, mm which was setting aside a judgment in default, and he got the law completely wrong. Mm. And in retrospect, I should have said, Oi, hang on, <laughs> hang on, <laughs> sir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, because it's always, I was taught that you don't interrupt a judge, but a judge in summing up, you, you appeal it. It was a pleasure having you in today, Robert. Thanks. An education, some fantastic information you've shared with our viewers. If there's anything in this interview of interest to you, Please do get in touch. Our telephone number will appear at the end of the video. Remember, please like, comment and subscribe.